on thick again and I want to let the turpentine settle up out of it so it thickens up before I start moving it around. Make sure those two colors are touching each other for right now. on the brush, the thinner the paint is, so I want to kind of have a light touch and just leave a bunch of paint sitting there for now. Holders and this bottom's fairly heavy, so it won't tip over. And it also it balances it out so that it's basically it's not one way. It's hard to hold something that's heavy in one direction. And then I on a decor like this, I'll just paint right around it because I'm eventually going to seal that up, and that's where the pad weight, the, the lead pad weight, would go in or a keel. Now again, I'm going to get close. I got to get just in this joint on the neck, but I don't want to get too much above it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to deal with that later because we're going to paint this head right now when it's wet. So the more I go over the line there, the more trouble we're going to have with that. Now I need to get some paint. to get some paint sitting right next to that. Again, that's going to be kind of a blend zone. So I might just even just leave some paint kind of laying there. And put it on a little bit thick maybe. And I'm not afraid to have my yellow brush touch the brown brush. It's okay. I'm doing that right now. I'm just putting that corner of that in there. I just want to make sure that they're, they're together, they're the same consistency. So when I start blending, I'm not dealing with two totally different situations. They're kind of one and the same now. I'm just putting extra paint on right now. Letting it set up with the turpentine evaporating out of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start working these two together. If you're creating a blend and you want the blend to be a certain width, if you're using a little brush, you can only have your brush in both sides of the paint. It'd be a little small blend. If you want a wider blend, you've got to use a wider brush. Because if I, even though I'm blending, I want the far right side and the far left side of my brush to be the original color. If you use a small brush, the brush becomes mud and it isn't, it's no longer black, it's no longer white, it's no longer the original color. So in this instance I can try to keep the darker sienna on the left hand side. What I'm doing right now is going to help this paint dry nice and flat too because I'm creating a whole bunch of little ridges. And some texture. And pretty soon it all kind of just gets kind of smoothed out a little bit more evenly. So that's what I'm going to kind of do all over the place. I'm just going to... There's 
moving, I'm moving, basically moving paint around. No paint's coming off the decoy, but I'm moving paint from the high spots to areas that might be a little bit. Fairly light touch at times. 